In today's episode, we're gonna go over a TIG welding torch breakdown for TIG welding stainless steel. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode from Pacific Arc TIG Welding. My name's Dusty. I'm a welding artist from Vancouver Island, Canada. I do art projects on both two-dimensional and three-dimensional art pieces. And on my channel, I love showing off and teaching the art of TIG welding. So if you're new to the channel, be sure to bounce back, check out the previous episodes. There's lots there for you to watch. Today's episode, we're doing part two of a TIG welding torch breakdown. Last week, I did a torch breakdown on aluminum TIG welding torch setup. So if you're keen on that, bounce back, check it out. Link is in the description below. But for today, we're gonna go over a TIG welding setup for stainless steel. Okay, so as you can see here, we got two torches. This is the aluminum style TIG welding torch. We did a breakdown on this last week. This is the one we're doing today for stainless steel. So we don't need this one. Beat it, fool. So this is the current setup I am running here for my stainless steel projects. It's a CK Worldwide nine style torch. The nine style torch from CK Worldwide. You can see the logo there. Nice diamond grip. I love the grip on these torches. They're super slick. It's got a flex head, so the flex head can bend a little bit. You get a little bit more dexterity when you're working in awkward positions. You can bend your torch to accommodate strange angles. But basically, let's bust this thing apart and take a look at the insides. So there we go. We got the whole thing taken apart. Let's take a quick look. So this is a gas-cooled style torch, or air-cooled, whatever you want to call it. Basically, it's not a water-cooled style torch. A lot of people ask me if they get a machine, should it be a water-cooled torch? Honestly, for stainless steel, I very rarely get this thing to a point where I have to put it down because it's too hot. I have done hours and hours of straight welding for sessions on my art projects. I've literally put six hours on a torch, intermittently of course, but for the most part, these tend to stay relatively fine. I usually work anywhere between 60 to 90 amps for my art projects. And this little thing tends to say pretty okay to deal with as far as heat goes. So if we're looking at just the torch basically here, you can see it's pretty simple. Try and turn it, that right there inside is where the gas comes out. So it's a threaded insert that goes the whole way through and then the gas port on the inside, very simple. But basically when you're putting them together, here's the things you wanna watch for. You usually have a cup adapter of some kind. The cup adapter, you make sure it sits properly. If it's askew, you'll have gas escaping and you will not get a proper seal. So make sure that's situated on there firmly. It shouldn't fall off or be loose. The next thing I usually do is I will thread on my outer collet body. This outer collet body is a 332 gas screen. Very basic setup. It's pretty much stock with most stuff you'll see nowadays as far as a gas screen goes. I mentioned this before, but this is again, worth repeating. When you tighten your outer collet body to the threads on the inside of the torch, you want it done up basically just a little bit more than finger tight, that's all. As your torch heats up, if you have it super smoked down and super tight, as the threads on the inside start to heat up, if you have a lot of pressure pulling on them because it's done up so tight, they'll warp really bad and you'll wreck the threads on the inside of your torch. From there, what I do is I prefer these wedge style collets. The wedge style collets do not have the slit in them. These last a lot longer over time. They will not warp or distort with heat. This little thing just slides inside, put a boom like that. Then your back cap threads on like so. There we go. And then from here, you can either put on a standard style cup. This is a Furic cup, I think. You can get these in alumina or ceramic type cups. Uh, lots of different variations on these, but basically these are very simple, simply because they just thread onto the existing threads there. You can see the thread pattern on the inside. They match perfectly. Or as I'm a big fan of, everybody on my channel knows, I use edge cups. Edge cups are super dope. They make a ton different cups, different varieties, different sizes for different applications and different types of gas volume that you can deliver out of a TIG torch. But basically this silver adapter here just goes over the existing gas lens and then your glass cup will just slide over these O-rings. And the dope thing about these edge ones is you just literally pop them off, pop another one on, pop it off, Pop another one on if you want to use a super extreme cup. <laughs> it's an 18 size cup there. Super extreme, but that'll get it done for large volumes of gas. But like I said, the nice things about these cups, whoops, don't want to break that. Then all I do is I work with a CK Worldwide laser tungsten. I usually just keep a bin of these, uh, these puppies ready to go here. But these are 332 as well. A laser tungsten just slides inside. And as I said before, I set my stick out distance equal to the width of my cup. So if the width of my cup measures to be a half inch width, I will not have my stick out more than a half inch stick out. Just a general rule of thumb as far as basically people getting going 
learning how to TIG weld. Just keep it simple and stick with that rule of thumb. You should be all right. Now, as far as variations on consumables or customized things that you can set up with your torch, check this out. So as you can see here, this is the gas lens type setup that I just showed you in the torch. Basic preference that I usually work with uh, with TIG welding stainless steel. The other version you can set up is this type here. This is called a gas diffuser type setup or a diffuser type setup. Again, there's an inner collet sleeve. This is a slit wedge style. You can see after a little bit of use, it's already started to warp. These things do not tend to last too long. That's why I prefer the wedge style collets because the wedge style collets will last longer under heat. Whichever style you're using, it slides on the inside of the diffuser and then the diffuser holds your tungsten like so. And then a basic cup just threads onto the outside of the diffuser, set your stick out distance like so, and you're ready to go with this one as well. I actually learned how to weld stainless steel with a diffuser type setup. You do not necessarily need to use a gas lens type setup, and when you're getting going with TIG welding, just use something simple. You don't have to go throw down for a bunch of expensive cups. If you want to, you can, it's pretty cool. But this will get you done just fine. So another thing you will notice is I have a customizable back cap on my torch. Because I spend a lot of time TIG welding stainless steel on my channel. I have several options for cool back caps. Some of these back caps, I think these ones here from Shea Spec. Shea Spec's on the screen right there. Check out his stuff. His stuff is incredible. This one's actually from my friend Greg. My friend Greg made this for me. I was super stoked. He sent it to me in the mail. It's kind of like a uh, like amber. I was asking him if he could put like a mosquito in it, like Jurassic Park amber or something like that. Clone some dinosaurs on this channel. But basically, they all serve the purpose of holding your tungsten on the inside, forming a tight gas seal to the back of your torch. I prefer to break my tungstens in half, so a mid-length back cap is pretty much perfect for me. If you like breaking them into small pieces, getting more tungstens out of a length, you can go with something really short like so. This is a shorty back cap, or they even come even shorter than that. Basically depends how long you want your tungsten to be. One thing you'll need to pay attention to when you're buying a back cap or anything like that is the thread pattern. The thread pattern for a nine style torch is different from a thread pattern from a 26 style torch like so. So like I said, when you're purchasing anything online, make sure you get the proper thread size for whatever torch you're using it on. But whatever you do for back cap, all it does is it just has to seal properly and then your tungsten can be on the inside just chilling like that. So if you got any value from what you saw on this channel today, here's how you can repay me. I encourage everybody at the end of every episode I do on my channel to go out and do a random act of kindness for a stranger. It can be something as crazy as helping someone push their car out of an intersection if they're stuck, or just something as simple as writing something nice on a stranger's Instagram profile. Don't care. Spread some positivity in the world today in the name of what you saw here today. We need it. But again, that's a pretty simple one, right? Just make sure you put your torches together properly. Try different configurations, see what you prefer. Again, like I said, you don't need super fancy gear to get going. Just get something that you're able to put together properly, learn with, and then once you get the hang of it, you can start spicing it up with some fancier stuff. I really appreciate everybody for watching my channel. Again, for Pacific Arc TIG welding, my name's Dusty. Hope you have a good one. We'll talk soon. Peace.